Hello friends and welcome to another session on physics and uh, continuing with our trend uh, we are going to discuss another important uh, topic and that's units of force. So like you have measured mass, you have measured distance, you have measured time. So every time you measure one particular physical quantity you must have a unit for it. For example when you measure the length of a room or length of the floor, length of a tile, length of a notebook, length of cloth you must have meters, centimeters, inches, length of distance, you know, uh, the path on which you are traveling or distance between two cities, you measure in kilometers or miles. Likewise, we have units of force. So how much and how do we measure or how do we put a unit for a value of force? So let's discuss that. So what is SI unit of force? So you know that all the uh, physical quantities are measured in something called SI unit, right? So international standard of units we have where all the nations have accepted or agreed upon common units so that there is no confusion while they are interacting with each other or let's say when we are doing any trade or manufacturing uh, uh, or such transactions between two nations then we do not, we must not rather have any confusion on how the particular quantity is measured. So we have something called SI unit of force isn't it so all of you are aware this SI unit of length is meters uh, mass is kilogram time is second so hence now what's SI unit of force so let's talk about SI unit of force so SI unit of force is Newton so you can uh, notice that there is a small n e w t o n and there's a reason why it's written small and all of us know who Newton was and it is abbreviated as capital N. So whenever we have to write, let's say 20 Newton force, then we have to write 20, 20 Newton force will be written as 20 and then capital N. Okay. And whenever we have to write 20 Newton, Newton full, so we have to write 20 N E W T O N. Okay. This is the way you should be writing. So if it is abbreviated form capital N so capital N right and if it is in full you want to, want to write full unit in the full name of the unit then the N here should be small that's the protocol or that's the standard convention which we follow for all units and units named after scientists right so to differentiate between when we are talking about the scientist we will write N capital but when we are talking about the units then N has to be small i hope you understood that next um so it is named in honor of sir isaac newton all of us know sir isaac newton he gave the laws of motion and uh, multiple other contributions in the field of mathematics or physics right now let us define one newton so in physics we need to define that quantity so how do we know what one newton is so how do we define one newton now one newton is defined as the amount of force so let me go with the highlighter here so that you guys can understand. So amount of force which when applied on an object of mass 1 kg. So let's say if you have a 1 kg object, the mass is 1 kg, not the weight, please understand. Mass is 1 kg. So weight anyways is not measured in kg, you'll know. So in, hence if there is 1 kg mass and if you are applying a force of Let's say you are applying some force, you don't know what this amount is and you observe that this body starts moving with an acceleration, right? It starts accelerating and the value of the acceleration is 1 meter per second square. So if that is happening, if this is the thing which is happening, then we say that the amount of force which you are applying onto this body is nothing but 1 Newton. So once again, so there's a 1 kg mass, you are applying some force. That force which produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square on the body is called 1 Newton force, right? So hence that's how we define 1 Newton force. Perfect. Let's go to our next information. Okay, so, um, so you can see here while writing in full it's Newton as uh, it's written as 1 Newton and uh, while you are writing uh, small and you know in small then you have to write simply capital N. Is it okay? Is it okay? Now 
So other units of force. Let's also now describe other units of force. Is the Newton only one unit or are there some other units? What were the units which we were using previous to Newton? So what are those information? Let's go through them one by one. So in 1946, there was a conference, you know, in uh, France. So this is called CGPM. Standardized, they standardized the unit of force in the MKS system of units. So prior to SI units, guys, there was something called MKS system, which was used in, you know, uh, United Kingdom. And uh, that MK system was uh, nothing but uh, very similar to what today we have as SI units. So mass was measured in kgs, um, so time was measured in second, and length was measured in meters. So meter, kg, second system, in abbreviated as MKS system of units. Now, uh, in 1946, this was the conference which, uh, you know, it took place and they defined what will be the definition of one Newton force. And here is where the definition of one Newton came. And that is the amount needed to accelerate accelerate one kilogram of mass at the rate of one meter per second squared. That's what we learned in the previous slide. So this is nothing but definition. And in 1948, the ninth CGPM. So again, there was a conference, and in nine, in this was ninth in number from the beginning. So in ninth CGM, they adopted the name Newton. So they gave this. Uh, definition and name and they said one newton will be equal to one meter one kg meter per second square so let me write it as one kg meter per second square so this is how newton was defined right so if one kg mass uh, is accelerated by uh, acceleration of one meter per second square that amount of force will be called as one newton so that was adopted in the year 1948 so it's like almost 70 plus years where we are using uh, newton as the unit of force there were some other units which were used or which were in in vogue let's understand what were those units so you can see these were the units so dyne was one and it is uh, nothing but uh, you know the conversion factor you can see one dyne is 10 micro newton right so typically we say one dyne is equal to 10 to the power minus 5 newton or 10 micro newton whichever way right both are same there was grain force there was gram force there was poundal there was ounce force pound force and kilogram force kgf are kgf is still uh, used in many uh, application areas so one kgf is nothing but the amount of force uh, the earth applies on a 1 kg object, right? And that is nothing but 9.80665 Newton, something like that. So these were some common units which were in vogue, which were used before we adopted Newton as the SI unit, isn't it? Now let us also look at uh, the values of uh, this, this thing. So how, how much is 1 Newton for? So if I talk about um, measuring 1 Newton, where do you see 1 Newton across or around yourself? So let us talk about that. In general terms, anything that has a mass of 102 grams, so if you take 102 grams of sugar, 102 grams of milk, 102 grams of sand and you know put over your palm, then the amount of force which the earth is applying on that body or that particular substance which is applying a force or the amount of force with which the earth is attracting the body will be 1 Newton force. Okay, So what I am saying, measure 102 grams of anything. So 102 grams of anything is now being pulled by earth so the amount of force which the earth is applying on 1 or 2 grams of anything is called 1 newton force so it's typically 1 newton force okay so um, uh, what are such objects let's let's have a look on look at those sub, uh, objects which apply 1 newton force or which is being attracted by earth by 1 newton force these are a few objects, right? You can see there is, you know, uh, oranges, some pieces of oranges are there, some um, milk powder or something is there, and then there is uh, milk. So you can see this much milk, uh, 3.5 ounces of milk you can see here, typically weighs, you know, one Newton force. And there are two carrots, around 101 gram is there. These are some gold uh, biscuits, which are around 102 gram. So this is one Newton force and some cereals are there so you can see all of them are applying or all of them are being pulled by earth by one newton force it will be also good to just have a look on the magnitude of force so what are typical values of forces around us so let's have a look 
So you can see force of gravity between proton and an electron right in hydrogen atom is how much 3.6 into 10 to the power minus 47 newton it's too small a number now weight of an electron the amount of force by which the earth is up attracting a electron towards itself will be around 8.9 into 10 to the power minus 30 newton you can see how small that number is so how what will be the weight of an electron almost negligible weight of an hydrogen atom is this much 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 26 newton force of an e coli bacterium so right the, you know uh, uh, this will, will be the force applied on a uh, bacterium by your 10 to the power minus 14 newton average force of human bite so when you bite something while eating then uh, the force your jaws are applying is how much 720 newton you can you can see the 720 newton of force is being applied when you are on a you know uh, train and there's a diesel locomotive which is pulling the train then the amount of force is 890 kilonewton so this is nothing but 890 into 1000 newton this much force is being applied by the locomotive on the wagons right now you might have seen a space shuttle uh, you know uh, leaving earth going to international space station and then coming back so the shuttle engine main engine thrust is around this much we are talking now in terms of mega newton so 1.8 into 10 to power 6 newton is the amount of thrust or the force thrust is nothing but a type of force which the engine is applying to push the rocket or to push the aircraft upwards force of gravity between earth and moon so the moon goes around the earth you all know so hence earth is pulling the moon by this much amount of force 10 to the power 20 newton the order is 10 to the power 20 newton right now similarly if you if you try to measure the force of gravity between earth and sun the order is of 10 to the power 22 right so you can see right from 10 to the power minus 47 to 10 to the power 22 so there's a wide range of forces which are there in nature right so this just gives you an idea of what typically your newton is one newton is one newton forces and what are the typical values of forces being applied by multiple objects around us so that will give you a sense of the magnitude of the force around in nature so this way we learned about the units of force now we know that units are very very important units are the soul of physical quantities so you will have to apply that newton uh, unit wherever required and hence while well, all science communication we need to mention the units wherever we are expressing or trying to communicate about forces i hope you understood this uh, topic let's go to the next one in the next session thank you